motion picture screen explodes with unprecedented power as the two masters of imagination, Jules Verne and Walt Disney, join to bring you a shattering new experience in entertainment. Read by countless millions, translated into 18 languages, this classic adventure is a story of measureless scope, fraught with fantastic beauty and danger. A classic is defined as being any novel serving as a standard of excellence or of enduring quality that accurately represents a period of time or thinking. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is considered to be a classic because of its accurate representation of the 19th century allure for exploration of the unknown as well as by setting the standards for science fiction novels. Written by Jules Verne, who is nicknamed the father of science fiction, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is seen to be directly influenced by Verne's desire to explore the world. Being the oldest child, Verne was incapable of traveling with his younger brother as a sailor because he was obligated to carry on his father's practice of being a lawyer. Instead, Verne created his own worlds as a source of amusement. The novel begins with Professor Aaron X and his assistant Conceal joining the crew of the Abraham Lincoln in their search for a mythical Norwal that has been destroying ships around the world. Once aboard, they make the acquaintance of Ned Land, a master harpooner from Canada. We headed south, and excitement ran high. Every man aboard was on the lookout, and the watch was kept day and night. Regardless of his own feelings in the matter, Captain Farragut left nothing to chance. With traditional thoroughness, the Navy plan was to cut the South Pacific into squares and search each square. All three characters give insight to the time period in which Verne wrote 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Professor Aronnax serves as an educated man who is a member of the upper class. His questioning of all aspects of his journey gives insight into his level of education, which was primarily available to only the wealthy during the time period. Ned Land represents the working class. He's an average citizen who needs to work in order to provide for himself. Finally, Conceal represents the lower portion of society by following every word or action of his master, such as when he jumped off the Abraham Lincoln just because... Professor Aronnax fell off. This is typical of a slave or servant of the time period. For several months, the three travel aboard the Abraham Lincoln in search of the Norwal. One evening, the creature is spotted and the crew begins to attack. In turn, the creature attacks the Abraham Lincoln and in the process, Professor Aronnax, Conceal, and Ned Land are all thrown overboard. The three grab onto the beast and discover that it is actually a man-made vessel. The crew of the vessel come out and bring in Professor Aronnax, Conceal, and Ned Land. They are introduced to Captain Nemo who explains that they are in his Nautilus, a one-of-a-kind invention he built to escape from society. Captain Nemo informs them that now that they know about his Nautilus, the three men can either join him in his voyage or be thrown out to die. Aboard the Nautilus, Captain Nemo, Professor Aronnax, Conceal, and Ned Land travel around the globe. The title of the novel is actually a record of the distance they traveled. For months, the group traveled the oceans of the world, visiting real and mythical locations such as Atlantis, while meeting cannibals and other creatures such as giant squids. All in all, the novel and the 1954 movie by Disney are similar in character and plot, but differ significantly in the beginnings and endings. In the novel by Verne, Aronnax, Conceal, and Ned Land are all introduced on the Abraham Lincoln. However, in the movie, all three meet before stepping aboard the Abraham Lincoln. In addition, within the novel, the story ends with Nemo steering the Nautilus into a deadly whirlpool. However, as seen in the following clip, the movie concludes with the death of Nemo after he blows up the Nautilus. Madagascar.